So now I'll, I'll go into our agenda. So the first item on uh, reorg is always election of the city committee. So um, I find it's if uh, any, uh, somebody would like to make a motion to appoint all everyone here as the new city committee for 2023. That would that's usually how we start. What does it mean? <laughs> what does it mean? Okay, yeah. so. Yeah, um, for anybody who's, who, who's not really familiar with the process, the, the way parties organize in Vermont, um, every off year, so in odd years, um, we uh, meet on the local level uh, here in Winooski or, and throughout the state in September um, to appoint a committee. And it's called reorg because we have to basically start from scratch. So we're, you know, we call a caucus and, and appoint ourselves as the committee. And then what we're going to do tonight, um, in addition to that, is appoint some officers for our committee. Hey, it's Diana. Um, and then appoint uh, members to represent us on the county committee, which then the county committees meet in October, and they'll appoint to a state committee, and that's sort of the overarching body that uh, runs the party. Um, and the state committee will meet in a convention in November um, and appoint, and then a uh, coordinating committee, which is a slightly smaller body that meets monthly and sometimes more than that to uh, run the day-to-day -day business. So the, the coordinating committee is the one who hires our few staff. We have an executive director and actually an organizing uh, person right now, we're, which is nice. Uh, we're not always able to afford quite as many staff as some of the other parties, so having two staff is, is pretty neat. Um, so yeah, so getting back to just what we're going to do tonight, we're going to uh, basically appoint ourselves as, as the committee and then um, appoint officers and uh, appoint members to that county committee. And I've got some discussion items here too, and we can decide how much we want to get into that stuff today. Um, but i uh, really pleased that there's so many people here. Um, you, I mean, I, I am new to this. What is saying we're, we're all going to be um, for us, it's not usually a huge commitment. Um, I think we've met only a, a couple of times. You know, we um, would meet if we want to endorse candidates in, in the March elections, for example, in municipal elections. Um, sometimes we'll meet to uh, endorse candidates for the November elections. So we, frequently in Vermont, um, people will seek multiple parties nominations. Um, so they'll, uh, they'll run in the Democratic uh, primary, sorry, uh, but also want our endorsement as progressive. So yeah, that's what Taylor did, for example. Um, and that's how, how we've sort of in the last 10, 20, no, 10 years um, dealt with the whole idea of being spoilers um, by running in the Democratic primary. So we're not spoiling anything because then you get to the November election and it's just you know, a Republican versus, well, frequently in Winooski, honestly, it's just whoever won the Democratic primary. We, um, so we, the, the city committee is essentially the ones who are organizing for progressives just here in Winooski. Um, so we, as Robert was saying, we don't meet super regularly now, but if we get a larger committed group of folks who are coming together and are really engaged around issues or specific candidates, we can meet more often. But truly, this is the deciding body that gets to say um, how often we want to meet and what our priorities are, especially when it comes to nominating candidates um, come for town meeting day or for uh, the election in November. Yeah. Okay, because I was, I mean, I was giving some thought to maybe thinking of like say county committee or something, sure. but I am, given that I'm still working a night shift job, I'm very leery of, yeah. I don't want to take on too much of a commitment to be like, I'm sorry, I can't do it. Yeah. Oh, you totally. know, so I'm just kind of, I don't know. Yeah, um, so we'll get to uh, appoint four people to the county committee, so okay. it's up to you if that's something that you want to do. Um, and the county committee, honestly, frequently uh, meets even less than, than we do. It's not, a, it's not super busy. Similarly, um, they, they will have to meet if they're going to endorse candidates on that level, like sen uh, state senate candidates or uh, occasionally uh, state's attorney or things like that that are elected at the county level. Um, sorry. I'm done. Um, what else? You know, but it also, similar to this body, it depends how interested people are in meeting more and, and doing more organizing and um, 
seeing so many people around the table, I'm hoping that that this year might be a, a start of like some good organizing. But um, you know, it's an, always entirely up to us as a as a committee, and then the county committee, and so. And typically, when you're on the city committee, then you're able to report back to the county committee what's happening on the city level. Or if you're wanting to be a part of the state committee, same thing goes. Is really um, being a part of this committee is, the, I would say, the most integral part to being able to be a part of the county or state committees as well. Um, being a member of all of those committees. Um, and, uh, um, yes, I will really push on the, on the fact that there are not a lot of meetings involved, but the meetings that are there are truly meaningful. And if, if you do then get to the state committee, that can be a bit more of a responsibility. They meet uh, quarterly um, and appoint the coordinating committee and, and things like that, so that can be a bit bigger responsibility but it's always about what individuals can and want to do I mean that's for a people's party so okay, we recognize I mean, sure. it. Yeah. I, mean, I, I mean I kind of want to you know yeah. get my feet wet some but yep. I also have you know very little time and energy as it is so I'm reluctant totally. to I don't want to make a promise that I want to have, you know can't not be able to keep <laughs> Believe me, it's, I know. <laughs> I have a tendency, I, for a long time, have a tendency to overpromise <laughs> myself. So I, I understand trying not to. You know, I've been trying to do that more and more. Um, and I respect that a lot. Because <laughs> it's hard. <laughs> but um, any other questions? Or? So I guess just to clarify, David, are you interested in being nominated for the city committee um, to start? Um. How about we say no? I'm sorry. Okay. No, that's, that's okay. How about we say no on that, and I'll just I'll just ask for the county committee. Wonderful. Um, as but long I'll as that. I definitely like to stay. You know, if oh, I can help out. Oh, please. On unofficial basis or something. Okay. Um. Sorry if I'm being a little difficult. No, 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 no. I just want to clarify. Um, I think that if if you wanted to be on the county committee i mean you'd want you'd need to be on the city committee too oh sorry okay. i i, I might have mis misunderstood no I was it's told that, you know, it was town and county and state yeah i i probably the misspoke had, you know, well, essentially less, less yeah. obligations in the others and i thought oh that's a good place yeah i i understand okay. that's uh, the way i was phrasing that was okay. it didn't make I mean, a whole I lot of sense I'm willing to be part of the city committee but i can't yeah. I mean, a huge, I, mean, I can't make a huge point. Yeah, so we won't be after you to run for office in March <laughs> yeah. or anything like that. Yeah. <laughs> Unless. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Perfect. No, yeah, absolutely. And, and again, like anytime, you know, if you feel like you're being asked too much, always sure. okay, push yeah, back. Sure. But yeah, yeah, we'd want you to be on the city committee first. Oh, to, sure. Yeah, it's, it's like a, you know, a tiered thing. And I'm definitely not interested in the state committee. That's Maybe fair. Maybe someday if it all goes well. Yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. Sorry. I keep forgetting that I'm... It's okay. Yeah. Can you hear us? Just ask when we get there. So, so yeah. So, uh, for the record again, I'm Robert Millar. Or I heard... I use they, them pronouns. I'm Bridget Ahrens. David, David Wilcox, he, him. Deanna Gonzalez, she, her. And Chloe Tomlinson, I use she, her pronouns. And Taylor Small, and I also use she and her pronouns. I, I use he, him pronouns. Sorry, I always forget that. Um, do, you, actually, yeah. oh, okay. do you have a question? Yeah. I was wondering if to kind of set this up for people who might not know, in Winooski, the Progressive Party, is pretty active because we have a number of people who are in office that are progressives. So I wondered if we might want to just summarize that. Well, actually, if we can, Deanna, do you want to just say a little bit about when Earlier, we actually introduced ourselves. Oh, this okay, great. Sort of a good transition. Uh, <clears throat> great. So, yeah, so um, uh, I'm former state representative um, and uh, I don't quite know how to answer that question. Um, uh, yeah, yeah, no, 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 that's it, that's it. No, it's just the two small children sometimes just suck suck my brain out of my nose. Um, uh, <clears throat> sometimes it feels like they're aliens with straws, but um, <laughs> um, yeah. 
so yeah, so it's been it's I've been part of the Progressive Party for ten uh, ish years, and um, it's great. I mean, people are just very excited about progressive issues, and um, and so it's just a really great place to live. And then it's this. Um, uh, we are like fairly active, and 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 even though we, our city council is nonpartisan, there's a lot of people on the, the city council who have progressive issues and same or um, leanings um, and and affiliations with the progressive party, and um, and we've had ebbs and flows on the um, school board as well, um, and so it's a nice nice mix. We you know clearly have um, our lovely representative who's progressive, and um, so. Yeah, so I'm not quite sure. I'm sure that there's better um, things as well. But um, in terms of like building up of and what are potentials is that we we do have just a, a high potential in Winooski to have more engagement and more outreach and more people who are interested in being part of our party. Um, and so it's um, in all the door knocking that I've done, people are just always very excited about progressive issues. And it's a matter of um, consistent organizing that we haven't that we have a lot of opportunity to that we could step into. Yeah, I think you've pretty much hit. We, you know, we've, um, you know, in, well, let's see. Uh, uh, Jean ran as a progressive way back in 2004. That was probably the first candidate to run with the progressive label in Winooski, and that was really hard back then. And it's still pretty. Not not always easy. Um, it's uh, the city sure has changed a lot since 2004, though. Um, and then I moved here in 2009, and our our committee consisted of uh, me and the Robinsons, Colin and Sarah Robinson, and um, one other person. Oh, Israel Smith, and that was it. Um, but we then we managed to get uh, myself on the school board, which. Uh, was unexpected. Um, and no, I haven't been on the school board that long. Um, <laughs> I was only, I only served one term, and then uh, I lost re-election, unfortunately. But um, and Sarah was on the council though for several years. Um, but that since then, then we got you were first elected in 2014 or um, 20. You were elected in 2020. 2020 so 2014. So yeah, so 2014. Yeah, you and I ran together in 2014, yeah. and you nailed it, and I did not. <laughs> But did pretty well. Um, and then in t 2016, I ran again. And, but up, and for, up until that time, uh, Winooski was a very democratic city. It's still a very democratic city, so it's not like a Republican stronghold. Instead, it's sort of like a middle-of-the-road kind of stronghold for a long time. It um, has a strong labor history with the mills mm -hmm. um, and things like that. But I would say a relatively... 50-50 split if we look at representation across elected leadership in the city. It's yeah. pretty much down the middle of Democrat and progressive. So left-leaning yes. across the board and definitely I also look to our charter changes mm -hmm. um, which were both uh, we think of all resident voting which happened two years ago and then this past year with just cause eviction really thinking of progressive values that we have that are are in our foundation and our pillars of what we truly believe in so to see them pass so overwhelmingly in Winooski I think we also know that there are a lot of progressive ideals that are held here yeah, yeah and it is important as to note as, as Deanna said that our, our council and school board are Nonpartisan, so people don't actually run with labels, so it can be a little bit complicated. I mean, it's not necessarily as straightforward as it's like the Burlington City Council, where you can say, "Oh, that's a progressive, that's a Democrat." You know, uh, some people just eschew labels completely, and some people own it. So, um, but we have pretty progressive overall, I would say. It's great. I get, yeah. The thing I was thinking about was actually justices of the peace because oh, I'm one of I'm one of those, yeah. Yeah. and I know we have a pretty good complement of progressives who are serving as justices of the yeah. peace. This is awesome because the city needs justices of the peace in order to operate, and so and so do Vermonters who want to get married or whatever. So um, anyway, I just yeah. So yeah. it's great to encourage people. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, so we've been electing progressive justice of peace since 2010, I would say. Um, and I think currently four of the, we have 15 total, um, are, are progressives. And, uh, and that's important not just for marrying people, which is great, but um, 
uh, it, they serve as the board of civil authority, which oversees elections. So if things come up along those lines, then um, that's good. Good to have that part. Um, and it's it's interesting. Winooski's really interesting um, because there aren't any Republicans on there, and there never have been that I know of. It's really very much the split between sort of the progressives and the Democrats in the last 10 years, 14 more, but however long it's been. I don't know. Since I came and upset the apple cart. No, it's not me. <laughs> Is the Republican Party active enough to get JPs on the ballot? No. Or, oh, okay, they're just we not even on the ballot. tried to organize last year uh, via Front Porch Forum, but it didn't materialize into any candidates running. Interesting. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I'm not sure if they even have a local committee, um, if they even manage that. Not to my recollection. Interesting. Yeah. This is fun. Any, yeah. I mean, I, I, I love it. <laughs> if, do we have other questions or fun? I don't know. Well, you're a JP, so you can talk. You can probably talk about how it's been this like just running elections. We've had several elections now with all resident voting, and of course, with all resident voting, they only vote on local elections and not the national elections because, yeah. Or not statewide. Just Winooski. You can vote for the school board. You can vote for the justices of the peace if you live here in Winooski, which seems fair to me. And yeah, the budgets, <laughs> the budgets are big, exactly. Um, but it makes it slightly more complicated at the polls because there's separate ballots, one with the national offices and one without. But we've had, I think, really good support staff from Winooski in terms of having interpreters, signs. Um, we have a hostess at the door or a host at the door who, in, you know, when someone comes in that is a non-resident to help them through the process or to even register them to vote that day. So, but that seems, it seems to be going smoothly. Yeah, I think it was a really good process that got us mm -hmm. there too. It was, it was deliberative and um, tried to involve as many people as possible in the discussion. Um, That was a good question. Yeah. yeah. Um, I mean, that makes me think of the, the Just Cause Eviction uh, Charter mm -hmm. change that was passed uh, last March. Um, so that's great, but that's kind of stuck in the it's legislature the for the moment. Um, Absolutely, yes. And part of the problem with that is is there was a technical issue on the on the city level when that was passed in when some uh, meetings were warned. Um, so it's going to show up on the ballot again, I believe, in March. Um, yeah, for a validation vote, um, which is simply just a, a revote on the same exact issue. Um, but in conversations with the Secretary of State, uh, the charter change still lies as one that we can move forward as a, a legislature. Um, we don't need the validation vote to move forward. But I think what we're seeing at the legislative level and has come up as an issue, um, I would say, well, it came up in my first term when we were talking about all resident voting, that when charter changes are passed, um, they might be passed by the municipality, but they still have to be passed by the legislature afterwards. And so um, in that, the legislature can change the language of charter changes, which I think is exactly what we're going to see in the next legislative session, is a more uniform policy that would be implemented for um, Burlington, Winooski, and Essex, which were the three municipalities to pass it in the last election. Um, I don't know what that language will exactly look like. I think it will likely be similar to the one that was passed for Burlington last year and was eventually vetoed and the veto was not overridden. Um, but that is uh, still to be told as we see what happens in the government operations committees um, in the coming session. But definitely encourage folks to follow along and, of course, advocate for um, the passage of Just Cause Eviction for Winooski. And since we're talking about it, I'll just put the little plug that we are um, only uh, one of a handful of states that has that, that most states as a city or municipality 
they can change what they want to and need to to, to govern their municipality um, and don't need the legislature to approve things. Um, and so like for instance, Winooski used to have in a charter change not allow guns to be shot in city limits. That was in our charter. And because of a different charter change when went through the legislature, it um, that was removed um, from our city charter. And, um, and so that there's a little push for changing that um, legal relationship between the municipalities and the state so that we can, as a municipality, make decisions that, we, that are right for us without going through that additional body. So just putting that out as a little PSA. Mm. So here for that change. Yeah. I think specifically what they were talking about was the uh, if I'm remembering correctly, it, a law that would allow anything that had already passed another municipality could go through without having to go through the right the whole law. Is that? Yeah. That, yeah. Well, uh, that was, it yeah. is one option moving forward. I think that's kind of the in-between of um, less oversight from the state. But, of course, I'm going to forget their names. I know it's Homer's Rule, and then it's some other man's name's rule. Um, <laughs> as to um, whether it is going through the legislature to be approved or whether it is just the city that gets to determine its own charter and what is happening within its own limits. And so I know the Vermont League of Cities and Towns has been a strong advocate for that change, especially as it hinders, and we've seen many charter changes that either just don't come up again and are not considered again by the legislature, or it only uh, goes through one time and then is vetoed and then does not come to fruition. So. The argument being that a charter change should be able to pass if that is what the voters are voting for, unless it is unconstitutional, and then we have those checks and balances already in place with the court system. Great. Wow, great discussion. Yeah. This is a really good discussion. <laughs> this is what happens when you have a, a, a lot of people show up, so yeah. I'm really glad to have you all. A anything else, or I can do the business part? Do the business. Yeah, do the business. Okay. Oh, yeah. <laughs> well, we only have this room for an hour or two, so. Um, so the first thing, uh, I, the way I want to do the city committee, um, if we want, if somebody were comfortable making a motion to appoint everybody here as the city committee. Um, so moved. Great. And uh, could I get a second? Second. All right. I should probably make a note of this. So moved by Aurora, seconded by Taylor. And uh, sometimes I go really quickly through these Roberts Rules type things. So if, any, if, if anybody's confused or concerned, please stop me and slow me down. But um, any other discussion on that? So all those in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Great. So we've appointed us. Uh, as the committee. Now, also had Erica Bronze had requested to be added to the committee, but right. she couldn't be here because she's going to see Ani DeFranco, and I'm really jealous. <laughs> okay. Oh. Um, yes. as, uh, um, Anyone else that wasn't in attendance today that was hoping to be appointed? We had one other person uh, who emailed me who I don't know well. Their name is uh, Nick Brownell. Does anybody oh, know? know you know Nick? Oh. Yeah. Yeah, I know Nick, but he's out. I think he's out of town right now. Yeah, so, yeah, so we exchanged some emails, and uh, he was going to try to get on Zoom, but then said he couldn't, couldn't make it work. So, uh, too little reception. Um, so he sent a little bit about himself, or themselves, I'm not sure. Um, I think Nick is they, actually. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I thought I saw that in, in their email somewhere. Yeah, so Nick sent a little blurb I could read, too. Oh, great. And, okay. Uh, so, hi, my name is Nick, and I'm interested in serving on the City of Winooski's Progressive Party Committee. Uh, last year, I helped organize a canvassing effort for just cause eviction in Winooski, where we won approval with 70% voting yes on JCE. Um, I'm running to be a Progressive Caucus Committee member because I believe the Progressive Party and endorsed elected officials can bring more municipal policy changes towards housing issues such as just cause eviction to the ballot. That's 
and and uh, I did go back and check old emails, and Nick was on uh, some of those emails around just cause eviction, so I can at least yeah. confirm that. <laughs> so. Great. So. And you're interested in being on the, the on this city, city committee, committee, or also cap just city? Uh, I think just city. Okay. Gotcha. Um, mm -hmm. I probably should have clarified more, but. Um. Well, they, I think they said city, but. Okay. Yeah. I move to add Erica and Nick to the city committee. Second. Ooh. Ooh. <laughs> Seconded by Bridget. Great. Any uh, further discussion on that? All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay. Great. So we now have a city committee. Yay! This is a pretty solid number. What do we got? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. I think that's pretty far up there. I don't think we've ever gone higher than that because if we got to ten, we'd get more county committee members so oh. I think this is oh. pretty much near the top okay cool uh, yeah I was yeah. just thinking it Aurora. <laughs> well <laughs> but we just changed the bylaws so it'll be I'm not sure how it'll work out it'll be based on um, well, how we like vote <laughs> yeah. double digits yeah. it's exciting yeah. <laughs> still 10 would be, be a great key. great yeah. goal 10 yeah. is a great goal yeah it's it is very complicated, but I guess it'll be more proportional, theoretically. So. Mm -hmm. uh, the bylaws as they currently exist and how we're running this reorg, um, up to 10 members on a, a city or town committee, we can appoint four members to the county committee, and 10 or more, it's eight. So I think they were thinking to make that a bit more proportional because Burlington gets eight, and, and, you know, and, and that's it. And even though they have a city committee, that's usually dozens of people. So. Mm -hmm. um, but that'll be in place for next reorg, so we don't need to worry about that for a couple of years. Um, our next business item it would be to appoint officers for this committee. Um, so we need to appoint a chair, a vice chair, a secretary, and a treasurer. And on this level, those have almost no duties. I mean, the chair runs the meetings. Um, unless delegated to, unless <laughs> delegated to <laughs> the, the vice chair. <laughs> I chaired for many years. Last couple of years ago, we switched it up and have ta Taylor chair, but um, Taylor's very busy. <laughs> so, um, and we don't have any money on the city level, so the treasurer doesn't really do much on this level. But secretary, we like to have take notes when we can, but I don't remember who the secretary was last time, so that's when I'm taking some notes. You live with them. Oh, I do. <laughs> oh. You should take some notes, too. Um, so I would look for uh, nominations for chair. I would nominate Robert Millar um, for chair. All right. Any other nominations for chair? Jeez. <laughs> oh, right. <laughs> Sorry, so I'll be your vice chair, Robert. Okay. <laughs> I gotta take. Are you gonna take notes or? I can take notes. Great. Um, any other nominee? Oh, I already asked that. Sorry. Um, so, then all those in favor of me as chair? Uh, Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Nope. Okay. Yay, Yay, Robert! Yay, I've been trying to move out of chair roles and things, but that's okay. I got off the housing commission chair. Not off the housing commission. I got out of being chair, finally, but I'm still on the housing commission. Vice chair. Nominations for vice chair. I nominate Taylor Small <laughs> to be vice chair. I accept. Any other nominations for vice chair? Well, I'll second. You'll second. Great. Seeing none, all those in favor of Taylor as vice chair. Aye. 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 Any opposed? Yay. Yay. Go around. <laughs> <laughs> um, nominations for secretary. I nominate Aurora Hurd for secretary. Second. Uh, any other nominations for secretary? All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? All right. 
that actually makes this paperwork really easy because I need signatures from the chair and secretary. Or <laughs> 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 my spouse. So we both oh, know. okay. <laughs> so yeah, that yeah. Yeah. Sorry, that joke was context. Yeah. 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 Uh, okay, um, and a treasurer. Any nominations for treasurer? Remember, there are no assigned duties. I nominate Chloe to be treasurer. I second. Do you accept? accept? Um, Sure. Yes. Any other nominations for treasurer? All right. All those in favor of Chloe for treasurer, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? (laughs) (laughs) Tempting. Yay! Yay! Excellent. So we have our office. We're already at the table together. Yeah. That's great. Yeah. Excellent. Um, so then our delegates to the county committee. So we can appoint up to four people to be delegates to the county committee. So who, I'm just going to throw out who wants to be on the county committee. I'm interested. Awesome. David. Wilcox, right? Yes. I know you're taking notes too. Just, we're going to do it as a slate. It'll be easier for me. Other folks who want to be on the county committee. I need you. But if others wish it, I'm Okay. And there are four slots? Mm-hmm. Four slots. Don't all jump in. <laughs> I can, yeah, I'll go on to the county committee too. If Bridget's going, I'm going. <laughs> I actually, I guess I would like to be on the county committee unless anybody else would rather. And you don't have to be on the county committee to be a COCO stands for coordinating committee. Thank so you. Sorry. It's that <clears throat> so you can be at the county level, but then you don't need to be at the county level to then be in that the coordinating committee, which is like kind of the board that supports and supervises the staff. And just to be clear, the state committee and the state coordinating committee are not the same thing. Right. Yeah. The, okay. The, yeah. So we appoint members to the county committee. The county com- committee appoints members to the state committee, and then the state committee appoints a, a coordinating. Committee smaller body to, and they meet monthly. And we're not appointing to the state committee right now. No. Because right? the county committee does it. Got the it. county yeah. committee Great. does. So. Cool. Okay. If other people would like to nominate themselves or nominate others, we have a little. No, thank you. You want to <laughs> escape the little aliens? <laughs> 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 I mean, it really is. Like sometimes I just think they're stuck in my brain in my nose. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. They're wonderful. But <laughs> and you can still come to county committee meetings yeah. and participate. You just couldn't vote on anything. Mm-hmm. Which typically all they vote on is state committee delegates and, and Endorse. endorsements Endorse. and nominations. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Well, so then we. Okay. Moving to appoint to the county committee David Wilcox, Taylor Small, um, Bridget Arns, and Robert Millar. Great. Any further discussion on that? All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Nope. Excellent. All right. Um, that is pretty much our business items. I had included some discussion items, um, which the first one was town meeting day 2024. Mm-hmm. And, also, and this is where I'll, I'll just point out that we do have CCTV here. So mm-hmm. if there are things that you don't want broadcast on CCTV, I wouldn't suggest you bring them up right now. Um, but, you know, like somebody who's thinking about it but doesn't want it mm-hmm. to share that sort of information. 
So for just for town meeting day, the mayor is up and two council seats are up. We do not know who, if anyone's going to re, um, run for any of their current seats. So there's that. We also have two school board, three school board members up. Um, so those are probably our biggest um, items for our candidates for the municipality. So I think really what we want to do is start thinking about one, how do we support any folks that are running for those? And two, if there are anyone that we know um, who might be interested in running for any of those seats. So we can kind of begin those discussions and think about how we can, um, well, if any of them run and want the progressive um, nomination or endorsement, because they're technically, as we went through, nonpartisan seats. But that gets access, or that can help with access to some of the state level um, like mailing lists and other resources. So that's where even at this level where they are nonpartisan, it can be important to get those sponsorships. Are you forgetting anything? Which two city councilors are up for re-election? Um, the, okay, the two city councilors up for election uh, is myself, so Aurora Heard and Thomas Renner. And Mayor Christine. You're on the city council? Uh, you probably already told me that. Sorry. It's been a lot of information. <laughs> I didn't know you did. And then for our school board, who's yeah, up so for our election school on school board? School board, we had two resignations, so we filled some vacancies. So there are th actually three of the five seats will be up. Um, and that is uh, uh, Stephen Berbeco is, is just up normally at the end of his term. And then the uh, Nicole Mace and um, Isaiah Donaldson were appointed and will have to run in March. Um, and I just ran in March, so I'm not up for a couple of years. And those that were appointed, are they running for full terms or partial terms? Uh, Isaiah is running for a full, and I'm not going to remember if it's a two or a three year term. I think it's a two year term. and. Nicole will be running for the remainder of a three-year term, so two more years. Yeah, it's kind of a mess right now. And do you know if they're both running? Mm, I guess I can't say for sure for Isaiah, but he seems pretty into it. Okay. Uh, <laughs> and, uh, and Nicole is definitely running. Okay. Uh, and Stephen, I don't know. Uh, we, no, I can't say. So start, let's start thinking about that now. Oh, and you mentioned um, with the endorsement, you, you know, get, comes potentially party resources. One of those will hopefully be a updated database in the next few months. We're moving from Civi, which is freeware uh, and what we've used for the last 25 years, to Nation Builder, um, which is supposed to, supposed to be quite a, a lot better with a lot more bells and whistles, so that could be really helpful to a candidate. Mm -hmm. awesome. um, anybody have anything else they want to say on that? Yeah, not. Yeah, yeah, definitely things to think about with that. Um, and that's, that's where we might want to meet more or, and maybe virtually to make it easier for people and start brainstorming down the line. Mm -hmm. uh, the other discussion thing I had on here is uh, organizing in Winooski. So, mm -hmm. you know, do we want to, this is a good opportunity with so many of us here, do we want to meet more, try to, you know, we, we talk frequently, we've tried to do little events here and there to mm -hmm. try to get more interest, but, you know, that comes down to the capacity. I was talking about, you know, to all of us. So, but I wanted to open that up as a discussion. Folks of ideas. I was gonna say with the um, level of, uh, we, have an we have a very interesting town meeting day, so it might be good to think about 
maybe December and January or January if there's time. Yeah. And I might just thinking of like I don't know Taylor if you're thinking about any pre pre session event, um, but that might be um, if you have the capacity to to do a pre session event, then that could be a draw for people to come. And then in that, like, is there interest about thinking about running for and during March, um, or <coughs> yeah, just something kind of around that might be like that, might yeah. be nice. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, let's talk about doing something in November, a little campaign slash progressive event. I just well, I just had a question. Does Winooski have in-person town meetings? Because Burlington does not. They just yeah. vote on town meeting yeah. day. Yeah, we have, a uh, okay. we have got Australian ballot. There is a, a meeting at the school the night before, but it's mm -hmm. not it's not where we actually vote on things. Mm -hmm. uh, well, I guess technically we vote on a couple of small things, but it's like moderator and stuff mm -hmm. like that. Mm -hmm. It's informational. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Which is also something as we think about, like we could, we haven't had a presence there, um, but that also could be something that we could think about because there's, there's still like there are people that come and really go through the budget and ask a lot of questions and so like that could be something that we could think about the day before and that's a longer term you know, that's organizing for not just this march but for uh, the next cycle which i mean it'll you know it'll be right here um so um yeah just a potential idea huh. see that's the sort of thing that you would call cctv and say could you record that yeah, yeah we mm. never do we never have CCTV there. They're usually at the uh, the dinner. We usually do a dinner before. Yeah. yeah. And CCTV is frequently there, but not the not the not that. Yeah. Hmm. That is I'm, funny. I should talk to the owner, yeah. maybe. Yeah. Like, because I bet people would watch that. Of oh yeah. Like going through the budget and understanding what it is. Not a lot of people usually show up in person. I can tell you yeah. that. I think we had like five last time. How many times I've gone, there were like 15, which doesn't sound like a lot, but it still is like, yeah, yeah. yeah. I don't think it, it quite bounced back from that makes sense. Yeah, yeah, the, the pandemic. Mm -hmm. yeah, before, yeah, before then, it was pretty well attended. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Okay, so there's, it's possible that CCTV can broadcast that live yeah. on YouTube. That's right, you can do that. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. So you might want to call call someone at the studio and just mm -hmm. explore yeah. about that a yeah. little bit. Yeah, you know, just it's a great idea. It's a great idea. Sorry, I, I do want to. It's probably my problem now. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> Robert. Robert, is the goal to raise awareness of the? Progressive Party? Are we looking for candidates? Are we looking for support for people? I mean, what, what's because if if any of those are the goals, you probably want to go before the day yeah. before the vote, you know? Yeah, I mean, yeah. it all it all the idea it, it all feeds up kind of the same as the yeah. committees, you know, yeah. getting people involved, uh, interested, and in farming candidates and, mm -hmm. and things like that. Um, mm -hmm. For going to that would not be to persuade anybody with the with town meeting day the very next day probably but right yeah um, but thinking about if there's but interest thinking of thinking, a I mean, just, campaign I mean, event slash mm -hmm. progressive meeting that's happening prior to in early november say november 4th if that's available on people's calendars and we mm -hmm. want to start looking at that um find an opportunity to get together where it is a meeting of folks with like-minded views or that folks are being able to come together and discuss issues that are directly impacting them. I think that's the best way to encourage folks to run for office is to be able to identify clearly like this issue that you're highlighting is shared by others and you have a voice that you can share within local government because we don't know how many of those seats are going to be open or not. And you know, setting aside the partisan thing for a minute, we both the school board and the I'm pointing this away for myself, <laughs> um, and the council are going to you know start crafting their budgets at the end of November through December, even and into January, and always, always looking for citizen input as right. much as possible. Like, mm -hmm. and you know, that's something where 
well, us in particular can try to let you know if we're, we're trying to get some pressure on different things. Like last time, you're pushing pretty hard to try to keep the equity director, things like that. And library funding. And mm -hmm. library funding. That's going to be big this year, too. Yeah. <laughs> it's an important resource for our community, yeah. so. Yeah. You've gotten a lot of emails about it already. Yeah. Keep them coming. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's always good. I have a question. Absolutely. Events are good, but I was wondering if the Progressive Party has if they've ever thought about putting something out, like a newsletter or a user group or something to kind of get people aware of mm -hmm. issues, uh, ideas. Updates at the various levels. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, we have whatever email list we have at the state mm -hmm. level, if you're signed up for those. But you have to be signed up for those. That's a little mm -hmm. different. Okay. And then we have our, our local listserv, which is kind of a mess. Oh, wait. We have Front Porch Forum. Oh, there's always <laughs> yeah. 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 I'm a big fan of Front Porch Forum. I used to work there. <laughs> um, yeah, getting stuff out on there. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think it's about like capacity. So, mm -hmm. like you know, needing to have somebody who like that's their focus, and is it once a quarter, once a month, and then like what's it around? Um, so, I would think in order to like be sustainable, we would need to have somebody who could take that on and own that, um, and then. I think if, if, that, if there is someone amongst us who could take that on and was interested in working with Taylor, like having during the legislative session, like just a, a great pull and draw around like what is, you know, day-to-day -day legislature, like all the different pieces, like that, that could be a great build for the whole year, but it is needing someone who says, yep, I can do that on whatever frequency and own it and do it. Um, and and that like that's that's historically been a challenge of like who can who can maintain something like that and i would definitely encourage folks to sign up for the state mailing list because mm -hmm. since we've now been able to fund a legislative uh, support person it means that we're able to put out weekly emails from legislators especially in the house updating about the exact issues that we're working on or the bills that are coming up um, and honestly, we saw significant engagement this past year from the Progressive Party overall, especially when we think about the elections bill that was considered in the House and Senate and is honestly likely to be considered again this next year. Um, and so uh, the fight isn't, isn't over on that and making sure that we keep our elections fair and, and equal. How would I sign up for the state mailing list? Oh, you would go to the... You put your email on here. I'll, I'll oh, okay. I'll, okay. Sure. All right. Signed up. Yeah. Okay. I was just going to say, I think also there's a lot of engagement when um, there are particular issue-based campaigns that really impact people's lives locally. Yeah. I think a lot of people got really activated with Just Cause Eviction, yes. um, and I wonder if there are ways <laughs> to, um, I remember Aurora, you shared updates about the budget um, through the listserv for yeah. um, the city committee, and I wish I had done more to sort of like write on FPF why that's important to me personally, because I think that those types of updates um, you know, are really impactful when people talk about w something that's important to them that impacts their life and other people's lives um, here in Winooski too. Mm -hmm. um, in addition to the, you know, longer, more in-depth updates about specific legislation, which is also important, but I think in terms of getting people activated, mm -hmm. those stories and individuals advocating for issues is really critical too. So maybe it could also be a matter of us staying up to date about what's happening and trying to individually share you know, action alerts that aren't, aren't like copy paste, but are personal yeah. opinions um, on FPF and other places. But, which is a really wide, it's a really wide audience, yeah. wider mm -hmm. than a list server, yeah. a local list, I mean, yeah, party list server. I, I totally agree with that. And I love the idea of something that's small and one, per, one person speaking instead of, here's a legislative update with all this big chunk of mm -hmm. stuff to mm -hmm. read through. So uh, what I'm wondering is if a bunch of people within the Progressive Party would take the occasional issue and post mm. about it, that might be actually more effective than having one person who's cranking out the monthly thing. Post on front porch form. Yeah, so if something comes up. Mm -hmm. 
Do you yeah. generally, I mean, I'm curious like if there are specific things um, in city council that you expect co coming up or on the school board. Um, I, I mean, JCE is passed and there might need to be some pressure on the you know legislature, but if there are other specific issue-based things that either like this group wants to focus on or we're aware might already be coming up, because that seems like a way that, uh, you know, an entry point for other people. It's mm. rather than saying like, do you want to come to this progressive party organizing discussion? Like, do you want to come to a discussion about like, how to prevent people from getting evicted by their landlords for no cause. That's kind of a more compelling ask often for people who don't know what the Paris Party is or aren't usually involved in organizing, so. Yeah, I think we're, we're coming up on the end of the hour I reserve, but um, I, I will want to, the last thing I wanted to say on the, the listserv is it's not intended just like for me to send warnings to like if, if you have things, you know, issues or, you know, sent, and I'll get you added to the local listserv too. Sure. Um, also, I should send like a little update out on there, just letting people know who's on there at this point. Mm -hmm. um, it's only like 10 or 12 people, but then if you have ideas for things that we should post on Front Porch Forum or events or anything, it's, it's supposed to be a discussion. And sometimes it ends up in your spam folder, so be, be, keep an eye out for that. I don't know why it does that. But a good place to start. Anything else? Great. Uh, I would entertain a motion to adjourn. So moved. Could I get a second? Oh, seconded. <laughs> <laughs> All those in favor, please say aye. 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 We're adjourned.